Good evening, good evening, homeschoolers! Magandang gabi po sa kanila. Wow, nena, ang aga mo. Maraming salamat. Okay, you're tagging Rose Ann. Thank you so much. Okay, I just want to really, before we start, I just want to do housekeeping. Alam niyo naman po. Hi, Janina! Hello, magandang gabi. Okay. Alam niyo, lagi kong sasabihin dito at hindi ako magsasawang sabihin sa inyo to. Kasi at the end of the day, uh, we want you to know, hi, hello, Ida. We want you to know that we're making this contents for you um, na hindi para sabihin na, uy, gayahin nyo kami, ito yung gawin nyo. Okay. What we're gonna do, do is not, we don't like an imposing spirit. We are here for you to educate you, empower you, and encourage you. So if you think na makakatulong po sa inyo to, then that's good. Panalo na po tayo doon. But anyway, I just want you to have that kind of mindset every time you watch all the contents in iHomeschool PH. Okay, I'm really excited. Hi, Bernice. Hi, Nika. Hi, Nena. Hi, Jen. Hi, Julie. Good evening. Hello. Magandang gabi sa inyong lahat. I'm really excited with this friend of mine. Biruin niyo po ha. Alas 4 na madaling araw. Ito po. Hi. Hello po, FB. Hi, Paul. Alas 4 na mag madaling araw. But this friend of mine talagang gumising siya na maaga for us. And I really appreciate her for doing that. Hi, Lulu. From Dubai. And actually, yung husband po niya ay best friend ng aking asawa, si Chinky. And I have known Heidi for such a long, long time. And it's such a privilege that... Um, we could do homeschooling then, no? As a journey together. So, minsan kinukulit-kulit ko siya sa messenger. Alam mo yung ganun. So, nakakatuwa lang na hindi namin maubos maisip na God will give us this opportunity na gawin ito together. Okay. And I thank you for this opportunity. So, for you to get to know her, okay? So, Heidi is a full-time homeschooler based in Canada since 2000. Educated other children's... Um, in various preschool setting, including a school she found called Clay and Potter School. So before she owns a school, and she has since then been led by God to divert and now a homeschooler of her own. She's a wife and a mother of two teens and another. Heidi had been homeschooling with classical conversations for five years now. And in this season of her life, her children is her, her mission field and considers herself based to be given this opportunity to spend much time with her kids. I'm so excited for her to tell her story. I just want to introduce to you my Komare, Heidi Tenafrancia D. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hello, Hello. Hello, hi, Nika. Hi, Del. If you want to say hi to all. Oh, hello. Hello, everybody. Yeah. Hi, Del. Uy, Del pala is watching from Camarina Zur. Wow. Oh, our class. Sino yung? May sinasabing our class president. Ikaw ba yung class president? Hindi <laughs> 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 yan. <laughs> ah, meron. Hindi ko akala ko ikaw yun. Hi, JJ. <laughs> hi, Nena. Hello. Okay. Hi, Christine. Okay, chill lang tayo dito. Alam mo naman, hides, no? It's like, we're just drinking, imagining, ano, like, dyan, madaling araw na. Usually, be, usually ba anong routine mo? Meron kong kape sa madaling araw? Yes. <laughs> Malamit ba kayong dyan? Sobrang Hindi naman. Mga 20 degrees. Ay, lamig dyan nun. <laughs> so, dito, opposite na opposite, lab. Talagang Thanks sobrang too. init. Sobrang init, but... Sobrang init then because you're my guest and I'm so excited for you to be able to share classical conversation. Sige, let's get to the point na because I know madami kang sasabihin and I'm so excited for that. So, kasi hindi naman lahat na intindihan kung ano talaga tong method na to, no? So, uh, the other week, or I'm not sure if it's last week, I was able, we were able to tackle here um, Charlotte Mason and unschooling. And one of the methods of homeschooling is his classical conversation. So what is classical conversation? As in, in short description lang on your own. Okay, classical conversations, I would sum it up as three C's. Okay. So the first C is um, that it is classical because of the name, right? So, um, and then the second C, I'll just go through one, two, three first. Second C is that it is 
Christian. And the third C is that there's community. So first C being that it is classical. Um, what does classical education mean? So classical, basically, it divides the children's uh, stages of development into three stages. The first, so this is the trivium that we, um, Novian yeah. mentioned earlier. Um, so the first stage is grammar stage. Um, so grammar stage um, is when the child simply parrots. So, you know, di ba, um, we know na ang bata, when we say something, Minsan mamaya maririnig mo, they're saying the same things. So that's the parroting stage. They just copy and then they have massive information that they can absorb. Parang, you'll be surprised, ba? A child parang, pag nagsasalita na parang, saan mo nakuha lahat yan? Parang from non-speaker all of a sudden being very verbal. Tapos parang ang dami-dami na nilang alam. Because, you know, um, children have that, ano, uh, capacity to absorb a lot of information and the older we get the more we know that that capacity isn't as great anymore as when they were very little so that's the grammar stage you um you tap that uh, advantage and um you allow them to be able to parrot as much information um so it's like ano um when you're learning let's say how to cook you learn vocabulary eh, ba? you have to know what is stir frying what does um let's say you're baking what does proofing a dough mean um how many teaspoons translate to one tablespoon so those are all grammar so grammar simply means information um and you don't necessarily understand the information but you have to understand the grammar of, of things. So when you're young, um, it, it's a lot of acquiring of information. So that's the grammar stage. And then the second stage is the dialectic stage. So in the dialectic stage, you start asking questions. Um, and we know that the adolescents in our, our lives, if you do have um, uh, adolescents, they start asking questions, why? But why? Why? So in that dialectic stage, you start to put information and analyzing things together because you start asking questions. You start thinking about all these information that you have acquired and how, how it applies. Um, so similarly to learning how to cook, you start knowing, I see I need to prove this dough or, oh, I know now that um, if I do not have a tablespoon, I could probably use th um, three teaspoons instead or um you, so so you kind of know okay what what if i put uh sugar um and i don't use brown sugar but i put white sugar you know so you start knowing the whys of things and this is the dialectic stage uh, so you tap into that um stage as well uh, in that stage of development so the third stage is rhetoric it is the older um uh, teen years and this is where they start synthesizing everything. So um, because we used cooking and baking as an example, this is when somebody starts probably making their own recipes, you know, tweaking recipes and making their own because they already have had experience in um, baking a lot of things, cooking a lot of things, and they're able to make their own um, uh, and adapt it to their own. So in... In that stage of uh, a child's life, then they start um, teaching, maybe, um, because we know that when you hear something, that's one thing. You write something down, that's another thing. But when you start teaching something, you you pretty much own it. And this is where uh, they start their output of essays. And um, so, so similar to what I discussed earlier, um, when you are baking and cooking, you actually uh, own the recipe now and you are able to make it your own and maybe come up with and create your your own dishes. Um, so that's pretty much what's classical in a nutshell. Uh, there's probably more to that, but that's um, in a nutshell. That's oh. classical. So secondly, yeah. it's Christian. So the mission of Classical Conversation, which uh, really attracted me to it, is to know God and to make him known. And I believe that that is 
for me, when I heard about it, it's like, this is why I'm educating my children, um, is to know God and to make him known. Um, so, so because that is the mission of Classical Conversations, it attracted me to Classical Conversations. And thirdly is community. Doing things with some other people occasionally, of course, this is still homeschooling, so majority of your time still spent at home. But doing things with other children allows for um, camaraderie, allows for collaboration, allows for you to stand in front of people and practice uh, public speaking, debate. So, yeah, the community allows for that. And, of course, friendship. Okay. Wow, that's really nice. Grabe kasi dati naka-attend na rin ako ng mga ganung seminar pero ibang level yung ah. pag-explain mo mas naintindihan ko. Okay. Actually, thank you so much for doing that. But because I know no yung your journey of homeschooling. Um why did you choose this method? Kasi I know you owning Clay and Potter before you're a Montessori method, ba? You're doing so what, why not do Montessori? Why did you choose? Uh, sinabi mo kanina because it's yun nga yung vision about the ba Christian. But other than that, do you have any reasons why? Why did you choose this from other methods? Okay. Um. Hmm, I well, I I use this as my spine, but okay. um. For for those who have are watching no uh, so followers of her her my home school, <laughs> you've heard of other methods, and I also dabble into those. But this is just my spine. Um, so why this? Um, I read uh, the Well Trained Mind by Susan Weisbauer, and uh, for those who have homeschooled and probably exploring homeschoolers, homeschooling, you probably have um, gotten a hold of this book. Um, so. Uh, the Well-Trained Mind discusses what classical education is. And I was really attracted to it because um, it has a lot of meat in, in, in what she does. Um, mm -hmm. And I felt that my own education, I needed to redeem my own education. I was really attracted to what it offered because it offered academic excellence. And oh. um, for me, I believe that uh, when God tells us to love him with all our heart, soul. It also includes our mind. Mm. So to sharpen the minds um, of our kids, uh, I think is is also essential. So when I saw the academic uh, excellence of what, what classical method offers, um, that is the main reason why uh, I chose that as my basic spine. if I'm wrong. Kasi I did that too for a season. So hindi talaga ako purely, like you, I'm really more, I think, mas eclectic ako sa'yo, mas magulo ako sa'yo. <laughs> At least ikaw, <laughs> nagtagal ka ng matagal sa ano, kung hindi magulo ko. But, ito lang ha, in a, in a very understandable way. So it's like parang pag small kids pa, there's a lot of memorize, a lot of information when they are young and it's done when your kids, yun nga, they're young, ano? And then a little or, or older than that, you learn a little bit deeper of what memorization you just had in your when they were young, tama? And then yung progression lang ah, of how I understand. And then in high school, because you know it so well because of those stages when they're young and then we're siguro mga grade 4 siguro yung grade 5. You actually all that you memorize or all that you observe you'll be able to use that in a debate. And at the same time, you'll be able to teach that. That's why, actually, some of my friends who really did purely classical, I saw how it was very beneficial for higher, higher uh, senior kids. I mean, senior high, no? Ang grabe sila mag-reasoning, yung logical reasoning. Very, ano talaga, very, very smart kids. That's what I, I realized na it's very, very, uh, how can I say, the technique of how it was all the trivium, no? Um, mabe-benefit talaga nila pag malalaki na sila. Mm -hmm. okay? They're very confident, especially a debate, di ba? Mm -hmm. So, for me, because of that word memorization, and some of the parents would, ha, huh, no, we memorization, parang ayoko ata niyan. Eh, ako nga minsan, parang, ha? Huh? Parang, I, I know it's it's hard to do, pero for you, 
uh, what is a memory master? I think that's a term that also used in CC or in classical conversation. Yes. Okay, so so yes, we, we go into a lot of memorization. And, um, you know, I remember when growing up, uh, because I was educated in the Philippines also, um, and I mean memorization. And then I felt na, but then I forget about them after a while. So what's the point? And I hated memorizing. So in the beginning, when when that idea came that that you know they had a lot of things to memorize, I wasn't really um, too sold to that idea. Um, <laughs> but having done that for a while. Um, I see the fruits now because I have had a child who has gone through it for five years. Um, itong memory naman is not like, you know, it's not uh, it's not done in a way na napapaiyak na yung bata like we did before. It, be, because I had a background in um, running a preschool. And in that preschool, we also memorized countries, let's say countries of Africa, countries of Europe, but they were all done with song and motions. And then it makes it fun. So even memorizing Bible verses, when you do it out of, from song, then it's um, it becomes more enjoyable and then you actually remember it more. So um, like memorization, when, when Novi mentioned earlier that it comes in handy. Let me just take for example, let's say for example, simple things like multiplication table. It's good that you memorize the multiplication table because nowadays a lot of people don't do that anymore because they they don't think memorization is a skill that one should be honing. Although if you look it up, there's still a lot of benefits to exercising your brain through memorization, especially even for, for older people, actually. But, um, but when you memorize the multiplication table, when you're into problems, then then you don't have to take time thinking of that, let's say, seven times three. Think think about that for a long time. But when you're looking at the problem, you're concentrating on the problem. Si similar to um, Bible verses, when you have it in your heart, when, when situations come up, you, because you have it in your heart already memorized, then you can just pull it from your mind and apply it to whatever situation that, that we're in. Like, let's say, for example, I mentioned earlier that you have to love God with all your heart, soul. If I don't have that memorized, then I wouldn't be able to tell you now in our conversation right now and, and use that um, uh, as an application to a real-life example. So, so that's kind of like why we memorize. But it's not a dull, boring kind of memorization. No, we do it in song and motions and in a community. Ayan, parents, ah, huwag kayong matakot sa memorization. <laughs> That's paro kami ni Heidi, totoo lang. Kasi ay, ako kasi like, for me, I memorize Bible din eh, by singing, singing verses and all that stuff. And even, meron na, meron na rin multiplication table na kinakanta yes. eh. Mm. And we enjoy that and that's what I did with my kids as well. So, it's siguro yung approach mo lang and then yung expectation mo lang din ano, Mm. on how you go about with memorization. But I just want you to know, do not be afraid with memorization. <laughs> it will benefit you. Kasi I'm not sure, no? Ito, wala naman to sa inaano. Kasi I still remember, I, I read an article na, na ah, no, no, no. The hand, 100 ber verses that you need to memorize. I'm not sure if you, you, ano, you, you encountered that book. Actually, I have that there. Hindi ko masyadong na, na ano nga lately, but Parang sinasabi niya doon na for you to be able to, sometimes kasi, you won't be able to fight life itself if you don't know who you are in Christ. So if mm. you memorize the Bible, you'll be able to battle that and replace that with the Word of God. Yeah. And it's true kasi, you know, the first memory verse, <laughs> nag-chika na tayo dito, pero yeah. The first <laughs> memory verse that I memorize is Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not yeah. on your own study. There's no... There's no fireworks, there's no song and end that. Mm -mm -mm. But I still benefit it now. Even pag may sakit ako, hides. That's right. Ay, parang, naalala ko pa rin siya. Yeah. Ang galing no, how God created our brain to be like yeah. that. I love it, I love it. Thank you for telling that. Now, so, with all of that, kasi I know classical conversation, one of the forte and my, my youngest daughter, inaanak mo like that, Latin. Why Latin? Okay. Why 
they added Latin in classical conversation. Why is it important? Okay. So why are we learning Latin? Um, Latin is the base of all Romance languages to begin with. Um, but really, we use Latin as a grammar program. Um, you know, late, li, dito ko lang na realize to eh. Um, Filipinos are very good in English grammar. Why are Filipinos very good in English grammar? Because it's not the uh, first language. So when we study English, we have to nitpick English like, Okay, this is, uh, if the subject is singular, your verb has to singular because there has to be subject-verb agreement. Ma, ma, we nitpick it because it's not natural for us. Um, unlike people here in North America, it's very natural for them to speak because that's their first language. So, so it's very natural for them. Like, they know that when I say he, it's an is. Like, why? I don't know. I just know that, right? So, so you nitpick a language when it's not your first language. And uh, Latin being the base of a lot of Romance languages, and of course, uh, I know, uh, being that English also comes from, from Latin, um, then you start nitpicking the grammar of, of the English language using Latin. Um, so aside from grammar, it also, of course, increases vocabulary. It gives you an appreciation of, of words more. Um, like um, if you look at etymologies, the origin of words, like even when you're studying the Bible, when you, when you know the origin of the word and how the word was originally used, then it gives you more appreciation of how it was used and now being used. So similar to Latin, it's, it's appreciation of, of word roots and how they were used and, and how it gives more meaning to words now. Sinasabi ng root words, no? Na nabe-benefit pa rin natin hanggang ngayon sa lahat ng mga ginagamit nating words. And na-appreciate natin yun. Kahit sinasabi na it's an old language, but we still benefit. And I realize my daughter, Destiny, it's easier for her to spell words because of that root words. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. I, I, I don't know in your experience, no? But I just want these guys, no? I mean, our parents, to appreciate the old language, actually. Not everybody could be able. Because, like, I think in the States, staple, siya, di ba? They, early years, or I'm not sure what grade level they teach Latin. Mm -hmm. Parang, I think they execute that between grade 5 and up. I'm not sure. But kasi dito sa Pilipinas, wala nun eh. Mm -hmm. naman siya para bang tinitake mo lang Latin pag talagang, I think, if you take a course like foreign language. But I really appreciate, I really appreciate Latin. That's really good. But, okay, with all of these things, this we're talking about all these details about CC or classical conversation. How do you do CC at home? What, okay. how, how does it look like in a day for you? Do you spend okay. two hours ba? Paano ba to? Yeah. All right. So, CC at home. In the younger years, it looks very different. So, in the younger years, um, the grammar stage, because it's a lot of memorization, um, really, CC for me uh, is just memory work um, for CC. So, for, like earlier I said, this is just my spine. I do use other things. And um, we do a lot of read alouds uh, with uh, my kids. Even my older ones join our, our read aloud. So, for those who are exploring homeschooling, this is something that you probably would want to explore. It's called morning time basket. Although, for me, I don't really do it usually in the morning all the time. Sometimes I do it at night. So, it's a basket of books that I have. Um, so memory work is included in my schedule for that uh, basket time. But in there, we have Bible. Um, so we do family devotions uh, with my kids. And then um, we have a read aloud from history. I have a read aloud from science. I have a read aloud from math as well. So we use Life of Fred. Um, and mm -hmm. then just read aloud of, of any novel that we that we choose. Um, so I, I, how do I choose books? There's, there's a lot of resources out there. Um, you can, usually what I do is I look at catalogs of different, of different uh, homeschool uh, 
publishers. And then I just look at their catalog and see, okay, what what are and usually, of course, I look at the Christian ones and I I see what recommendations they have. Um, and then so we we I choose books from there. So we use put that into our our basket as well. Sometimes we do hymn studies as well, art studies, mm-hmm. composer studies. So I do that as a loop in my, so loop is another term that you will read about when you read on morning time baskets. But but for my younger ones, that is. And then for the rest of the time, really, it's what whatever. There's no, aside from, of course, he, he has... Um, he has reading and math work to do. So again, math, you can just use whatever program that you have. Let's say if you want Singapore math or Matthew C or, um, yeah. For, for, yes, yes, as well. Yeah. And then a reading program, a language arts program. So aside from math and language arts program, for the younger ones, at least for the older ones, it looks very different for the older ones. Yeah, it, it, I, I can go deep into it if you want, but um, it looks very different <laughs> for the older one. Oh, siguro ko kwento mo lang yung ano lang gist nung sa older ones. Okay, so so gist nung sa older ones with CC, which is again another thing that attracted me to it because you know when I was starting to homeschool, of course they were all very young, and then I'm like thinking, okay, wh- am I able to do high school? Because oh, wow. it's another ball game, parang. I don't think I can, which you you know um, later on probably um, will I know it's 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 ironic because eh, all of us graduated, but then it it gives us the fear to homeschool high school. Pero usually pag nadaanan mo na yon dapat kaya mo eh, di ba? Oh, so, oh, so it makes you question our own education. Totoo. So so anyway so the classical conversation has given me that spine how on how to homeschool my my older one so meron silang schedule meron silang what do you do for debate what do you do for um so in the debate they also have economics in the older years um you know several several ideas like for example my older one uh, they just did a cost of living project in economics so it made him realize how expensive it is <laughs> to support yourself like tanong asha sa akin can i can i continue to live with you until such and such a <laughs> time <laughs> so so yeah it has given me that spine to follow so i like that and um, we also do it in a community. So, mm-hmm. namo motivate sila. So, once a week we meet, and then the rest of the week you do whatever you need to do at home. So, meron silang checklist to follow. Oh. Okay. O, itong tanong. Okay. Is classical conversation expensive? Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> classical conversations, they actually um, set the tuition according to the uh, GOP of a country. <laughs> so, oh, so kanya rin Pilipinas pa niyon. You know the 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 last time that I saw the Philippine prices, they're a bit over ten thousand, like thirteen, something like that. Mm. Yeah. So, and not everything goes to you know, and yeah, there's some um, there's a division in terms of where all the funds go. Um, some of it, of course, because if you meet as a group, where will you meet? Sometimes it's a, a some rented facility or some ano. So some would go there, and then some would even go to whoever is facilitating the the program because you know you take time to facilitate the program. So some go there. So um, and then you also get training on online. So that also is supported. So you get training, you get resources, you get access to, let's say, for example, um, aside from memorizing with songs, for some kids, they it works if you um, make them do copy work, like copy yeah. the, right? So some people copy verses to memorize. Or, so you copy certain things that you need to memorize. And so CC also offers that um as a resource to help the parents. Okay. Thank you for that. Okay. 
Kasi tinatanong nila para may idea, parang ha, sabi, parang feeling nila sobrang saucy sa pangalan ng classic <laughs> conversation. Pero hindi naman talaga yung ibig sabihin, no? Pero ang galing, when you explain a while ago those three C's. But my question here, no? Kasi it was always, parang I just want to know what is the difference between a classical conversation and a Charlotte Mason method? Okay. Um, I think Charlotte Mason focuses, uh, and, and I, I'm not a Charlotte Mason um, expert, but <laughs> the little that I know about Charlotte Mason is that you use a lot of living books, which is really beautiful, right? Because you use, um, like, let's say, for example, you're reading on, on history. <clears throat> it's really different when you read it from a textbook and you read it from a living book, a living book where it's told like story-like, Um you know, like uh, even in sermons, when you really think about it, the stories in sermons help you remember the sermon um, more, I think. So in living books, it's the same, I think. And in Charlotte Mason, they use a lot of that. Yeah. They use, uh, there's a lot of routine building, habit training. Yeah. yeah. So classical um, is more of the academic rigor uh, behind wow. that. Um, okay. Yeah, I think there's a difference, but you can actually combine both. And um, That's good. Yeah. That's good. Thank you for that. So, mga <laughs> mami, yung mga nagsasharlot dyan, pwede nyo i-combine. You know, maganda sa homeschool po eh, very flexible. You don't have to be confined in one method. Ika nga, where you are at your season in life as a family, if that works for you, combining it, or pwede rin lang isang specific method, basta whatever works for you, eh, panalo na po yung. Okay. But, I just want to ask, no, kasi may mga questions dito, Heidi, I think it's very, very um, relevant, no? Like, can you give an example of how you use, by Ida, Hazel, if you can, yeah. Can you give an example of how you use classical conversations with subjects like Math. Meron okay. din sa Filipino. If you, nagturo ka ba ng Filipino dyan? Filipino? No. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay lang. <laughs> so, kasi ayoko rin i-bug down yung kids ko, di ba? I mean, um, you, you, you only want to do so much because you also want to give them time to be creative, to be bored, to explore uh, their own interests. So, I didn't really add another foreign language. Um, we do Filipino as a family. Like, um, magtatagalog kami sa harap nila. Uh, kinakausap namin na Tagalog. Um, I think so. That's the extent of our our Filipino um, lessons with them. Okay. Uh, it's more okay. immersed. Classical conversation in math. Okay. So math, we really use our own um, program. Um, you are free to use Singapore math. Um, and that's that's another thing. Uh, another thing that I would want to uh, share is that um, children are all different. So sometimes we cannot put it in a box. And my children, when they were growing up, all used different, I mean, not all, but the boys used something else. My girl used something else because she's different. So they use different programs. So that's another thing, no? Don't don't box it and then think that everybody's the same. Everybody yeah. learns differently. So what works for one may not always work for another. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, it doesn't mean one is necessarily better than the other also. Okay. So ito, no? Kasi kanina in-emphasize mo yung about community. I think... Lahat naman kailangan ng community. Pero I think, ito yung isa sa mga method na talagang strongest, ano niya yun eh, no? Forte ng CC yung community. So, nakalagay dito by Raising Covenant Children. If we meet as a group using CC, do we have to pay the CC International for license or they can do it independently? Okay, so CC... Um, I, I think the question is more like, is it a franchise, no? It, yeah. um, they, they, they're now in Singapore, they're in Brazil, I think in some Eastern European country as well. So somebody just needs to establish it there. Um, 
Mm. They don't really need to pay international. Like even here in Canada, when you want to establish one, you just come up with a community. And then you contact Classical Conversation and say, we want to start Classical Conversations here. And then they set you up. There's no fees until you have a community. Uh, there's basic application of very minimal, um, but not like when you want to franchise, let's say, a uh, food chain. No, it's, it's very different than that. This is like application, minimal fee, and then they'll walk you through it. And usually it's unless you have people in the community, then you don't have to pay for anything aside from the application. Okay. So for you, what is the greatest challenge of using CC? Is there a challenge? Um, I guess I guess the challenge, um, and, and it's the same for all homeschool curriculums. Um, I've, I've seen it. Uh, talked about in different um, in my research um, is when the child is hesitant. Uh, so sometimes, again, because you cannot box put children in a box, so sometimes they can be hesitant to do certain things. Um, and 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 there are people there, and and that one one method may not be used for for every child. Um, so that is probably one of the greatest challenge for me is when they're hesitant. And yeah, if, if they are, um, like for example, how, how did it come about that my children use different math curriculum? Because my other child was hesitant toward the other curriculum. And dapat wag kang hinayang yung sabi mong, nakun, eh, paano na yun? Nabili ko na to. <laughs> mahal, mahal nito. I, I would say that you don't sacrifice your relationship for, for that, um, find find ways and and so that that's why I had to research what what kind of and you know for for my other child who uses a, another curriculum, I had to change the curriculum two to three times because we we needed to know what works. Yeah, I totally agree that because we need to meet where our child is. You cannot force it. Yeah. Mahirap yeah. na ako mag-homeschool ng ganun kung pipilitin mo. Hindi, ito talaga yung method. Sobrang uh -huh. perfect. Gawin mo na, now na. So, hindi po pwedeng ganun, di ba? Nakakatawa. So, um, my question is, because of the pandemic now, di ba? The COVID and all that stuff. Do you think, if you if if they want our audience right now who are watching, they want, they want to do classical conversation, meron bang, meron bang mga sites that they can get it's for free and they're like, less expensive materials that they could be able to do this or mga workshops that you know that maybe they can avail for free? Okay. Um, there is a practicum coming um, and practicum is free. So oh, yeah. I can send Novi and the link for yeah. that so that you can uh, know about classical conversations more. Um, one thing uh, that Novi mentioned earlier was the community. Um, and community, for me, uh, one of the things that nakita ko na advantage doon was um, one of the things that we use. So curriculum in math, they just give you leeway on whatever math curriculum that you want. The only thing that you do in community is that you communicate math. Because one of the things na, na I know about about you know, is um, you can know everything that is technical about math, but if you do not know how to communicate math, then that is something else. Because eh? you need to be able to know how to communicate. I remember um, one time there was an article that I read that uh, they had an observation of people in Singapore. People in Singapore are very technical people. They're very you know smart yeah. in that way. Um, pero bending sila don, de ba? Yeah, but then they still have expats for their top positions, um, basically because of communication. Parang, oh. you can be so good in all the technical stuff, pero in order to be one of the people in the top, you really need that skill you know, to be able to communicate. So math in classical conversations, we actually communicate math. And when you teach it... Um, you actually that that's another part that's almost similar with Charlotte Mason. Charlotte Mason, they ask you to narrate to to tell us what you actually know. So in math, it's the same way. You communicate math by teaching math to show us what you know. 
Um, and, and community has uh, been um, beneficial in the sense that I remember when my child, yung isang anak ko, when he was grade two, I gave the same curic- exact same curriculum na ginagamit ng classical conversations for him to write. And then he was in tears. Sabi ko, baka hindi talaga writer itong bata ito. <laughs> So so then I I gave up on on using that curriculum thinking na ay baka it's not for us or baka he's really not a writer. And then when we got into classical conversations, it was the same <laughs> curriculum for writing. It's called Institute of Excellence in Writing. Ah, that's another really good. Yeah. Really so that's really another good. good writing curriculum. So yeah. when we use that because it was in a community then na motivate siya kasi everybody else is doing it and then the next week you have to present your paper so then nawala na yung tears he was just motivated to do it because he was motivated to present in front of a group of people his paper oh ang ganda kasi na empower ka eh nakikita mo yung iba na gumagawa ay nakakatuwa yun so siguro ngayon dahil hindi di tayo capable because of social distancing and hopefully we nako lord sana makakuha ng vaccine Siguro ang ginagawa yung community now is through Zoom or you do it online. Okay. Thank you for the encouragement. So, importante po talaga yung support group eh. Yes. Sa community. Right. Very good, very good. So, okay. Alam mo kasi na excited ako sa mga last words mo eh. With all of your learnings in homeschooling, I still remember the day na Nuvi, ba't ka ba nag-homeschool? Si Marvin Pata nagsabi sa akin na <laughs> yung kasama mo. Sabi niya, Hindi gusto ko mag-homeschool eh. So, parang yung socialization ng mga anak mo. Pero I was really happy when you decided and then you texted him, Novi, parang mag-homeschool na rin ako and all that stuff. And I was really excited that you decided on that. And so, with your last words, so tell us, tell us your story on how do you, how God transformed you in your homeschooling journey. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. So, I did not really, it was farthest from my mind to homeschool because I owned the school. <laughs> and then, <laughs> I believe that collaboration was important. And so, I really, that was farthest from my mind. And um, I knew that, yun nga, sabi ni Novi, my husband was not um, into it. Kasi nung si Novi and we heard was homeschooling, sabi ng asawa ko, magiging weird yung mga anak niyan. <laughs> Galing. <laughs> magiging unsocialized sila. So then it it uh, hindi ko na naisip. And then coming to Canada, my son's Sunday school teacher was a homeschool mom. So sabi niya, you know, yung anak mo parang masarap i-homeschool kasi yung personality niya. Um so and then sabi niya, you pray about it. So sabi ko, okay, I'll pray about it. I'll pray about it. Um and after a year, after praying about it, I will ask my husband. And if he says yes, then I will. But if he says no, then I won't. So I was not really still sold on it. I went to research on it, attended different workshops just to know what it is. And then after a year, out of the blue, parang sabi ko lang, without discussing advantages or disadvantages, I just told my husband na, you know, I was thinking of homeschooling. Ang inexpect ko answer, ha? Huh? Okay. <laughs> Parang di ba magiging weird yung mga anak natin like he did with Novi. Pero sabi niya, alam mo sa tingin ko dapat lang. So it, I was really shocked kasi I did not discuss anything and that's what he said. So I felt it was God's answer to my prayer. And so because I felt that God led me to it and you know you really need that for those who are just thinking yeah. of writing. You really need that um that uh, assurance from the Lord, yung parang go from the Lord, kasi it will not be all smooth. And then, and because we were not homeschooled ourselves, most of us, I think, it's it's mm-hmm. a paradigm shift. And because it's a paradigm shift, it will take a while for us to shift that paradigm. Um, and so, because homeschool is not school at home, it's very different. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah. to hang on to, it was God who led me here. And that would keep you going. So for me, it was that. Um, and you know, throughout these years that I've been, um, I've I've seen, you know, you mga teenagers that there's they don't talk much, at least to their parents. Um, they're always on their phones. Always, I I think classical conversation is one of the thing is the conversation part. 
yung having conversations. When we Tama. read books together, we converse. Yeah. Like, Tama. We Tama. talk about issues in the books. Like, let's say, for example, um, one of the books that we read is um, Where the Red Fern Grows. Um, oh, um, oh I, I actually, Little Bridges is my example. Um, and in Little Bridges, um, binuli yung bata sa school. So when he, 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 he one time na puno na siya, nag-fight back siya. So pag uwi niya, pinalo siya ng nanay niya dahil nag-fight back siya. Pero yung tatay niya parang said something like, good job, parang ganyan. So parang naging conversation sa amin. So saan ka magsaside? Parang yun yung questions na sinasabi ko eh. When they were in the dialectic stage na, then you start asking questions. Who do you think is correct? The mother or the dad? What do you think you will do? Parang, and it's not like imposing on them. It's not a lesson that I impose. It's a it's an issue that we just took from the book. So parang very neutral because it's not anybody that we're talking about. It's a book that we're talking about. We're talking about the characters in the book. But real life situation, what do yeah. we do? When you are bullied, what does the Bible say when you're bullied? So, so we go through that, and then that's where you train your children to think biblically. Because each time we talk about an issue in the book, I always and this is something that I learned from classical conversations because they have what it's called the five common topics. You do definition, circumstance, relationship, um, comparison, and testimony. And testimony is usually what does the Bible say about this. So, so then we compare, and then we go through everything. It, and then I don't, I don't push my my ideas on them because it comes from them. We go through what is what what is the advantage of this? What is the disadvantage? If if he fights back, what is the advantage? If he doesn't fight back, what is the advantage? So we go through all the things that we can think about, and then finally, what does the Bible say about this? And then in the higher years, when I talked about the higher years, one of the things that I also learned, um, again, it's redeeming my education. My son does debate and they research issues. One time he was on the other side. So as a family, we don't believe in abortion. And one of the things is here, abortion is legalized. So one of the things that they had to um, research, and it was his side Now he was pro-abortion. Even if he did not believe in it, he had to research on why people think abortion should be legal. And it made him more compassionate towards the people when he started to research because you have to fight for it in a debate. And then one of the things that he realized was compassion. At the end of the day, it's still God's word. Pero hindi ka na judging. Like when people actually decide to do that, yung judgmental part is taken aside because you have uh, tried to put yourself in their shoes. Um and then know how to, uh, know. it's kaya nga, knowing God and making Him known. Because That's when nice. you make God known, you also have to do it in an excellent way because our God is an excellent God. And to be His disciples, we also need to strive for excellence because we do it all unto His glory. So so you have to do it in that manner. Be gentle, be non-judging, but, but at the same time, present the truth to them. In, in a loving manner, in a gracious manner, in a gentle manner. But on no both sides, know why, know why they're thinking that way. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. I like what you said, no? Totoo, no? Ang galing. Ibig sabihin, classical is, for me, it's like, ano eh, no? You go back to your roots, you go back where you came from, whatever God has given us. And then, you try to yan nga, use it as a conversation. No? Ang, ang galing, ang galing lang kasi yun nga, I like this pandemic, it's it's really, I think it's a blessing in disguise rin, no? na we could be able to get to talk. I mean, tayo, we are, wala tayong choice, nasa loob tayo ng bahay. So talagang mag-uusap tayo. So I hope yung mga parents dyan, no, sinasabi ni Heidi a while ago na, Siguro some of your friends and some of my friends too na talagang nakatutok sa phone, hindi mo, na, hindi mo na nakakausap yung anak mo. Kasi training din yan eh, na you talk to your kids. At the end of the day, that's what I want. No matter what their yearnings may be or questions they may, they will talk to me. They, we are the, as parents, sino unang-una nilang kakausapin pagkailangan na alam nila there's a safe environment when they're talking to us. And when you say converse, there's a gentle, you know, conversation na alam nila na hindi mo sila babarahin, alam mo, or i-contradict, but you will listen to what they're gonna say. And I love that. I love that. So, Heidi, last words from you. 
And I'm okay. so excited with your points. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. But before that, let me yeah. just add also classical. Okay. The, the whole okay. purpose of classical um, is why you educate your children. Kasi naging okay. utilitarian siya eh. Nung, when the Industrial Revolution came out, parang naging utilitarian, you educate to use them. Parang you educate, oh. so you train them to use them. Pero is it ganyan ba talaga why we educate children? Or is it to create virtue and it, truth and virtue and beauty in, in the kids? So that is where the classical approach is. You don't educate them to be of use, but you educate them to develop truth, beauty, and virtue. <clears throat> so my last point. Thank you. <laughs> my first point is to begin with the end in mind. So when I talked about being utilitarian, <clears throat> ano ba talaga yung purpose natin for our children? When when we have a vision, what, what do we envision them? Like for me, my vision is there is no greater joy than to see that my children are walking in the truth. So if that is my end, then what do I do to go towards that goal? So when we go back to my earlier example na yung math curriculum doesn't work, if I push my child and then destroy our relationship um, because of a math curriculum that I bought so expensive, is it contributing towards the end na having my children walk in the truth? Or should I emulate, you know, model Jesus, hopefully model Jesus' grace to my children um, uh, and, and do more discipling to my children, which is why, again, the beauty of homeschool, because they don't spend all their time in school. They spend it a lot of time at home, and that's where I can disciple them, right? Because in the end, I want them to be walking in the truth. That is my end. So, so we have to think, what are the steps that you need to take for the end? Kasi ano ba talaga maging lawyer, maging doktor, yun ba yung end na gusto natin? Hindi eh. It's, it's beyond that, right? So, so um, that uh, if you begin with the end in mind, then hopefully you'll take the steps uh, to journey towards that end. My second point is don't be myopic. Um, sometimes it's, it's ano, when we talk of education, people are very stressed about makakapasok ba yung anak ko sa university? Parang, sometimes I wonder, yun lang ba talaga yung end goal? Parang university? And, and then after that, what? Because most of us have graduated from university. Sometimes, or maybe most of us, do not even practice what we took in university. So, if that is, if that is our only goal, hanggang dyan lang tayo nag, nagpa-plan, um, maybe that's being too myopic, too nearsighted. We have to go beyond that. In fact, um, if you study the verse that says, train a child in the way you should go, they will not depart from it. Sometimes we see that as, ah, yung mga magagandang asal, ganyan. But if you really study the verse, there's, there's an implication there that says, in the way he should go is how God has designed the, per the child to be. Um, so again, we can't put them in a box and, and think that, university education where they will be uh, uh, a university education does not really spell success in life um, if we just plan till there then then that can be um, being too myopic about it the third um, point that I want to make is to reconsider why you do what you do why why do we put our children to school anyways why do we educate our children um, Dahil ba sa tradition? Because it has been done like that for so long, then we just do it because everybody does that. We're expected to do it. Like, why do we put our children in school? Because they're expected. And society will look down upon you if you don't. I mean, reconsider. Why do you do what you do? Um, and hopefully that will um, get you thinking. Um, yeah, classical conversations, questioning. Uh, so, so it's good to question ourselves too. The next point um, is um, that I want to say is to allow the metamorphosis to develop. So um, sometimes we hurry our children. Um, we are worried, like, Naku, seven na yung anak ko, hindi pa marunong magbasa. Um, but all my children, they started reading uh, in different 
at different ages, all of them different. Um, and and now that they're a bit older, I I could really say that it's not something that you should really stress about because they all get there somehow, as long as you provide the environment for it. Um, so like a butterfly, you don't. Pag nasa cocoon pa yung butterfly, you don't slit and cut it open because it will die if you're in a hurry for it to metamorphosize into a butterfly. So we same thing with children. We don't do harsh things like that because the love of learning will die. So allow it to develop in them. They all have different time frames. God has designed them all uniquely and differently. And you just allow, have to allow God's time, God's perfect time, for this particular child to develop and to metamorphosize. I've had a child also who I think would never be a writer because when we started the Institute of Excellence in Writing, even in community, she, <laughs> he, my child wrote the shortest essays in the shortest sentence possible with tears pa. So I'm thinking, okay, this is not going to be a writer, but I don't force the issue. You allow time. Three years into the using the you know, the same program in classical conversation, because I don't push it, like if it doesn't work, but because you use it in community, let's continue to use it, but in the minimal way that you want it to be. But now she writes on her own and she even blogs. So who knows? I think God also wants us to, same thing with salvation, right? it is not of work so that no one should boast. With our children, God doesn't also want us to boast that it is because of my curriculum. It's because of me as a, as a mom. I'm a good teacher. No, everything that I saw in my children wasn't because of what I did. I, I believe it was because of how God developed them. And, and it marvels me. Um, and I think that is what God really wants. Uh, same, if you look at all the stories in the Bible, uh, Gideon, why was Gideon left with 300 men? Because well, God wanted the glory to themselves. And I see that in homeschooling. God wants the glory to himself. It's not how good of a mom you are. It's not how good. Nothing that we do is a guarantee that our children will end up in the way they should be. It's a day-by-day -day dependence on God. And all we do is just, just do what God asks us to do, but there is no guarantee about the result. We can always just water the plant, but we cannot make the plant grow. It is only God who will make the plant grow. So my next point is um, avoid comparing. So again, your, your children are unique individual beings created by God so that we are all different parts of the body and we all contribute different functions to the body. So same with your children. You cannot compare them or you cannot compare them with other children's children, again, because we're all different. So you have to find your own groove. Um, you know, as you listen to the talks of these homeschool talks, everybody will have different ways. Some people stick to routine. Some people wake up at 7 a.m. All their children wake up. And then they do same thing every day, and they're all they all seem to be very disciplined. And that's not the case in our family. We're very um, we're we're not very routinary people. But then it, it works. Um, of course, it's not perfect, and I don't think I don't think there is such a thing that, that a perfect homeschool family. Um, but find your own groove. Um, don't be stressed about it. Lean on God's grace every day. Um, and 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 rest in him um so another point that i have is uh to choose relationship above the curriculum so again a curriculum can be expensive and sometimes parang kailangan natin tapusin itong workbook na to if it if it doesn't um if it doesn't work because um Maybe there's too much writing, too much. It doesn't work for the child. It's he's he's wired differently. Then you don't really have to. You can scale back anytime, um, modify it a bit, or change it completely. Um, again, look at the important things. Again, begin with the end in mind. And if it doesn't contribute towards that end, then don't stress about it. The beauty of everything is again to rest in the Lord. Um, there's a very good book called Teaching from Rest by Sarah McKenzie. So if you can get a hold of that, it's, it's, a, it's a good one. Uh, it talks about bringing just your five loaves and two fishes to the Lord, and the Lord will 
definitely multiply it. And what a liberating and restful thought to be able to just depend on God. Wow. Amazing. I'm speechless, <laughs> Heidi. Thank you so much. Thank you for the mouthful, uh, you know, conversations with you. And all of these points are really relevant to the now. Thank you so much, you know. Thank um, you. Yeah. Thank you for this opportunity. Alam ko, ano oras na ngayon dyan? Alas 5? <laughs> six na, six. <laughs> mm -hmm. O buti na lang, didivo ko na madaling araw. So, <laughs> Oo nga. Lord, natulog ka hapon. But yeah, I hope everybody was really enlightened to, with our session right now. And yeah, alam mo, nakakatuwa. Meron dito, Heidi, na may miss na kita, Ed. Oh. Meron dito, Ed. Oh, wait lang. Where is that? Meron <laughs> Eden K. Oh. Hi, Miss Hattie. Oh, Hattie. yes. Oh, yan. <laughs> Dami pa lang, ano, madami ka pa lang paala dito, ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for inviting me, Novi. Thank you for this yeah. opportunity. Yes, yes. Truly. Sobrang, ano, sobrang, it's a blessing. All the, all the, you have, you know, shared to us. Thank you so much for that. Thank you, thank you. Okay, do you have any more questions before we wrap it up? Oh, sabi dito ni ano, Bertie Ami. Sabi, this homeschooling method is evidently, oh no, wala, depend on God's natural timing, which really needs a deep, sincere faith in God alone. Thank you so oh. much for that, Bert Ami. Okay. Okay, kung wala na po tayong question, so that's really good. Thank you, Heidi. Just thank you so much. Nako, at ang galing mo, one hour, ang galing. Talagang, nako, <laughs> Kasi usually, nag-overtime kami. Pero thank you so oh. much for that. Thank you. Oh, Janine Quason said, thanks, Miss Heidi. I'm inspired to explore this method. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Siguro later, you could be able to, um, you know, look at their live comments and you can comment on them na lang. Sige, sige. Thank you so much. So wait for me. I'm just okay. going to wrap it up. All right. You know, when when Heidi was talking about all these things, I'm, I'm trying to absorb it. And... I'm not sure where I seen that, but I realize if I'm gonna encapsulate everything that she told us, no, homeschooling is about producing people. No, it's not a product. I don't know about you, but at the end of our journey, I want to look back and see the lives well lived, de ba? Parang madami ng smart na tao, eh, de ba? Madami ng um, siguro nag Harvard or anything like that, but there are people, not products. At the end of the day, I want to see my kids na ano eh, na um, growing up, they will be able to show kindness, compassion, honesty, and integrity rather than those achievements that the world views. And I like what Heidi said, eh, diba? Yun yun eh. The bottom line is we're able to share to our kids, no? I like in classical conversation, yung sinabi niya na, um, knowing God and make Him known. So the question is, in our homeschooling right now, whatever approach or whatever method that, that you want, what is the end in mind? Okay. Remember, our kids are not products. There are people being shaped by God, like me and you. Okay. So I hope that you really love, you really love what are conversations? Like ko na masasabi yung conversation kasi iba na yung meaning sa akin ng conversations ngayon. But thank you so much, Heidi. Thank you so much. But for all the reminders, let's go back. Okay. We're so excited that you love our contents. If you have any comment, please help us to improve our contents. But to remind you, if you really like all the things, oh yeah, I forgot. With all of this, because um, really so excited and I Check all my uh, stuff na hindi ko na masyadong ginagamit and I want to share it with you guys. Um, if you learn a lot from this conversation, na talagang inulit ko ulit, ano, we're gonna give away some classical conversations that I use also and authors that you could be able to read and be able to inject into your uh, homeschool uh, journey as well. And this is for free. It's a giveaway. I homeschool PH giveaway. First, I have the Harp and Lauren Treat. Poetry and Dictation for the Classical Curriculum. That's really good read, um, parents. And it's also by Sari McKenzie, yung The Read Aloud Family. Sinabi nga ni Heidi yun, kahit ako, 
until now nga ay eh, gusto ko pa mag-read aloud sa mga kids. Sometimes pinipilit ko sila. Ay, <laughs> dede. But definitely a good book from Sarah McKenzie. And what else are we gonna give away? Hazel? Okay, this one, I like it. I'm gonna show it to you guys. Because in classical conversation, they sometimes they focus on cycles. And one of this is the Osborne uh, Publishing Company. I like how they do their books. Okay, so may mga flip and flops. This one is focusing on sizes and measuring. Sizes and measuring, and then whoop, you can have, I sorry, I'm at that view. Your little kids will know and enjoy about sizes and measuring. This is a really good book. And can we go back there again? And then step-by-step -step drawing people by Osborne then, publishing. What else are we going to give away? Uh, this one, the Osborne Book of Inventors from Da Vinci to Biro. And Osborne Big Pads Make Your Own Comics. Okay, this is a fun, fun material that I hope that you will really, really like. So if you want and you're interested and you think that this would add value into your homeschool experience, please join us. How to join? First, follow and tag, tag us at iHomeschoolPH. And please tag Heidi also at, at ClayPipeIG. If possible, po both IG and FB. Ngayon si Heidi, meron din siyang Heidi ten na Francia D or Heidi D. Number two, post a picture of today's session and place in the caption what you have learned about today's session. And then number three, place the hashtag with your post, a hashtag classical conversation, importante po yan, and hashtag iHomeschool page. Like kung mo sinasabi pag may giveaway, make yourself public. Kasi po, pag hindi po public, hindi po namin makikita ang inyong post. Okay. Okay, marami pong salamat. So join us and uh, share to us what you have learned. And this coming Tuesday, nakakatuwa because... Uh, my dear good friend, Mai Kaufman, will be our guest. And she will talk about how to homeschool gifted kids. Oh, wow. It's a different angle and topic po yan. But I know Mai's family and her journey. And it's really interesting on how she was able to homeschool her gifted kids. So abangan niyo po yan. That's Tuesday, May 26, 8 p.m. po. Again, Tuesday, May 26, 8 p.m. with Mai Kaufman. So if you have gifted kids, a lot naman anak natin gifted kids eh. And I know that Mai will be able to share a lot with us as well. Okay, please don't forget to follow us in our Facebook page, in Instagram, in our YouTube account. And please, if you think medyo mahirap akong kontakin, we have a Viber uh, page as well, which is iHomeschool. Connect with us, you just put iHomeschool. And then if you think you want to learn more about homeschooling, how to start and all that stuff. You can get my book at 750 and also you can get that in digital form. Okay, it's 500. And when you get my book, this is good. You have free teacher organizer and student organizer. So ginawa po niya, namin niya para makatulong po sa inyo. Maraming marami pong salamat. Wow, I really enjoyed this session. So, lagi po lang nating tatandaan in homeschooling po. Relationship is more important than academics. Ako po si Novi Antan, ang inyong homeschool coach, and I homeschool. Bye, good evening, have a restful night, enjoy your family.